David. Start. Yes. Um, yeah. Hello, I'm David Radley, and I'm one of the Egeria maintainers, and I work with Mandy and Nigel, and Graham and uh, Billy. And um, I was just going to do a little bit of an overview about what where we thinking um, user interfaces fit with Egeria, and what's in the Egeria code base at the moment, and where we want it to be. One of the main reasons to do this um, would be that um, we're really looking for people to join us in, and uh, help us create, um, enhance the um, user interfaces that we have. So this is what we have there. So running a UI, you, at the moment we have one UI um, code, which is a piece of code which has been in the code base for um, over a year, probably two years, I suspect. And um, we've had another piece of code which has just been added in the last few days, uh, which is very new and uh, is definitely in development. It's not really ready to be consumed yet, but it's the area that we want to put effort in and is currently being developed by a number of teams, including Brian, who's on the call, and Trinette, who's been sponsoring it as well and I've been involved with that, um, to be able to enhance and create a new um, user interface. So we've got these two user interface uh, experiences, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about those two and then give you a demo of um, some aspects of the existing user interface. So the existing user interface um, is sort of geared for a mature organization uh, it's very sort of metadata driven organization. They're concerned with um, data lakes and they're looking sort of for high end UIs, with very mature use cases. And uh, the new uh, UI, um, is, which I'm calling the second UI here, which uh, uh, is actually going to be to come as well, is going to be. Um, multi-tenanted which the, the first ui isn't so we're um and it's it fits more naturally in with using view servers and the like notice from the types of omag servers so going through this quite quickly um if you if you look at um where the roadmap um part of Egeria is on the website um i was really just thinking this is one way to think about how to position these UIs. Um, so if you're looking up at the governance solution, some of those um, capabilities that you're looking at are things like data lineage, um, gloss review, asset catalog search, things like that. That UI is built on a, technology, a, a different technology stack. So the one, um, this one's been built on Tomcat, uses the Spring framework and uses Polymer web components. So as opposed to the other UI, which is the new one, which we've been developing, it actually calls the view server. So I just thought I'd, um, I'd we haven't really talked anything about the view server as yet, um, but it's a, it's a set of services that are exposed just for a user interface. So we're, we're hoping the user interface would make one call and then under the covers, the view server may back end to be able to give a, um, a payload, deliver a payload back to the user interface that is, it's much more, that is consumable by it. So this is, I can't take credit for them. These are Mandy's uh, diagrams. Um, they're, um, so if you can notice at the top left, we have um, a, a yellow box there, which is the view server. Now the yellow boxes here are um, servers that you configure in, in the way that you've been uh, playing with today. They have a configuration file. Um, so you issue those um, rest commands and you configure the servers, um, the view server and various other OMAG servers. So we have this concept of a presentation server, which is the the, um, the the new server. So I'm calling that the presentation server UI, and that's built on a um, a different technology stack. It's got it's React based, as Mandy said uh, earlier, 
It uses Node.js, uh, it's passport orientated and carbon. So just, I think it's, I know this is a bit architecty, but in order to know that, to see the flow of it, I think it's worth um, just seeing that the browser calls the presentation server, which is Express, and that running Node.js. It calls up to the view server with these OMVSs, which is the Open Metadata View Services, and that calls to the makes calls to the backend platform for OMASs and the like. So that's the sort of the flow. Um, so it goes browser, presentation server, view server, OMAG server. And um, so this is what we're, we're the, the capabilities that we've got in development at the moment. <clears throat> we've got um, administration orientated um, capabilities. So we've got exploration of types and resources. Those um, user interfaces are also in the uh, existing UI, and I'll demo, demo those in a moment. Demo those in a moment. Um, the the configuration. Um, you've spent quite a lot of time in the first part of today's dojo around configuring various types of servers, um, endpoints, um, enterprise buses, max pages sizes, and the like. Um, so. Rather than having to use the the notebooks, which are really geared towards demo environments, um, these are pre pre canned and give you an, a really nice narrative to be able to show the sort of use cases. Or having to use curl or Postman, it'd be much nicer. We feel if we could have a a more natural user interface experience to do this configuration. So that's what um, uh, uh, Trinette and um, and Brian's team are. Uh, working on. I'm working on um, the, the glossary author side of um, this, which is authoring semantic content. And um, we're also going to, the other part of the administration is the exploration of types, and that, that's been worked on currently as well. So that was just a brief overview, and then I was going to go and do a, a demo uh, of the resource explorer and the type explorer. Any questions? Okay. Yep, sounds good. Okay, I was just trying to keep it reasonably short as well. Um, so this is the the login page for the um, for the existing UI. The new one would be tenanted, so in the uh, in the URL there would be a tenant ID, um, and then it would go forward to the actual the subparts of the URL like Type Explorer or the like. So I'm just going to um, log in. And hope that the sessions haven't timed out. Oh, that looks quite good. So these, I'm going to show you the Type Explorer and the Repository Explorer. These are not interfaces that we're hoping to, ex to expose to business users. These are more sort of people who are configuring the system, people, um, architects, um, sort of Gary Geek, who's down at this level and he wants to see the resources um, that are actually in the system as opposed to the higher level business focus um, access APIs that we have which we've um, crafted for particular personas. So we have some APIs for glossary authors, and we have some APIs um, envisaged for um, data, data scientists and the like. So I'll just... Um... And I'm going to... So this is what's called the, the Type Explorer. And um, if you remember from when we uh, when Mandy did the introduction, there is a series of types, open types, which define effectively everything we think is important in information management IT. So this defines everything you could ever really want, is the idea. So from, um, and, and we've just gone through some of the aspects of it with, um, uh, assets. So we've got things like annotations, um, and we have actor profiles, and I'm sure uh, 
so there's asset. You can find asset there. Um, I, I need to make this full sized for it too. There's annotation. And um, there's asset. Uh, I'm struggling to go down. <laughs> There it is. If you can see it, says asset is um, at the top of the screen, and this is really showing the in, in in this diagram view. It's showing which type is inherited from which type. Because one of the things that we found with Ajiria is metadata repositories seem to have their own way of describing things like database tables and columns. But they all describe they're describing basically something that's very similar. But they all do it in subtly different ways using their own language and their own formats. So what, uh, well, one of the things that Ageria brings to the table is you can define these things in one way, an open way, and then hopefully um, you could extend any nuances that you have in your version of a, of a database table or the like so that people can talk that common language. If it's a database table, it should be a database table. We're then exchanging that concept between um, the metadata servers. So this is a way to educate people, um, navigate around the types, and um, I think it looks pretty neat. Um, it's different. There are different types of, um, you, so you can do relationship types and you can also do classifications and uh, wander around them. Uh, I think it's a good way to orientate yourself with the, the richness of the type system, which is quite difficult to understand unless you can see it visually like this and start to wander around it yourself. In a similar way, uh, we have the repository explorer. So these types are, um, you can actually create an instance of these types. So they're the entities and relationships we're talking about. So each of the entities and relationships are instances of these types. So um, what I'll do is um, I'll connect up to this one as well. And um, and um, So what we've, and there's another piece of work that I've been involved with recently, which is to do with um, defining these types in RDFL formats in JSON-LD. So we have a little sample which doesn't have meaningful information in, but it was just set up so that we could prove that all of the parts of the RDFL format mapped into Ageria. So you can bring that um, semantic information in, you can write, you can author it in whatever way you want, uh, as long as it comes in in that JSON LD file with particular. Um, there are restrictions about how we read that because you can write JSON LD in lots of different ways. But it's um, we have two ways um, mappings of those that um, that semantic content into Ageria. We've, had, we've just added the second one recently, and the, this is the sample associated with that. So what you'll see here is some glossary content. Um, so what um, what is nice about this UI is it actually um, it's trying not to flood you with information. It's trying to so really the problem with metadata instances you can easily have is if you shine it at a real system, you'll get flooded with information you don't understand, and with the sheer quantity of things of a given type. So what one of the guiding um, sort of principles we've used as in construction of this UI, which was done by um, Graham Wallace, was that we um, allow people to filter as um, before we actually issue the query. So here I've done a, uh, a search for glossaries and it's found one glossary and it's now Shown one dot on the on the um, the canvas, which is the glossary, 
and it's highlighted. Now we know that um, this has gone in in the last couple of months, I think it is. Um, there is still, um, we are working on pinning it and not have it move so much. Um, so you will see it moving around more than it will. It'll, it'll settle down in time. Um, so here, when you do explore, it shows you every all the types that are connected to that glossary. So here we have two entity types and they're connected with, um, and here we have two relationships. So it, it, I happen to know that term anchor is um, the relationship between a glossary and a glossary term. And a category anchor is a relationship between glossary and glossary category. I could um, filter it further on classification if I wanted to, but then I wouldn't see the categories. So now, um, so what you see here is a, some categories some terms with sort of test names. And what you can do is you can highlight one you're interested in and then explore again. So you can say, well, I'm interested just in the terms it's connected to with all of these types of relationships. And you can see it's now drawn in some more lines. So if I move that up there, move that down there. There. <laughs> you can see it's now. So um, what it's also trying to do is um, as you do more exploration, it's working down the page. So it's sort of got a concept of, of knowing when you did things. So it's we're at the moment when this time based, we can also make it proximity based, which effectively it'll arrange itself in as in spatially rather than temporally. And there is an undo go back to what you had and you can also see where it how you got here um so it's quite a neat way of traversing um metadata and understanding what you have because metadata at its heart is a, a network of connected um, nodes with important relationships between them so this is a very natural way of visual um, to visualize it on a canvas like this and allow you to um, more than one hop and change your criteria is a very powerful way of understanding your metadata. And because it's using, you're not just stuck to one vendor's metadata repos um, repository, you're actually looking across all of, all of the things that you have access to, all of the parts, the metadata repositories that have been plugged in um, to the Egeria ecosystem. So it's a, a very powerful thing. Um, one of the parts that I'm working on on the, the new UI is glossary authoring. What I'd like to be able to do is do authoring based on this concept as well. So you could do um, navigation the way that we just have been um, just then. And you get to a part that you, you realize needs amending. And then you can naturally either append to it Create a new relationship, correct an attribute, um, those sort of things, and naturally to be able to draw lines between blobs is the is what I would think is one of the the natural ways of um, of thinking about relationships and creating relationships. So um, that's that's not actually in the centre, is it? So um, that was an overview of the type and the uh, resource explorers.